This will be our last program on gases, and I want to look at two problems. In my first problem, I've got 100 cubic centimeters of hydrogen and 100 cubic centimeters of oxygen, and I'm going to make steam. The important thing to note in this question is this particular line right here. All of the gases are at the same temperature and pressure. That is going to allow me to take a bit of a shortcut, which I'll show you shortly. So we start off with 100 cubic centimeters of this gas and 100 cubic centimeters of this gas. Now, usually we take this information and convert it into moles and then apply the equation. But there's a bit of a shortcut I can use here. Because these are all at the same temperature and pressure, I can employ Avogadro's idea that equal volumes contain equal numbers of particles. So if I have 100 cubic centimeters of hydrogen and I produce water, I'm going to produce exactly the same amount of water or steam in this case because 2 produces 2. There's the same number of particles in both of these containers. So if I have 100 cubic centimeters of hydrogen, perhaps I could produce 100 cubic centimeters of water vapor. Now I also have here oxygen. How much water vapor could be produced from the oxygen? Here there exists a 1 to 2 ratio between our two species. As a result, that could produce 200 cubic centimeters of water. You might recall from our unit on stoichiometry and limiting reagents that you can only produce the smaller amount of substance. In this case, that would have a fewer number of particles in it. So in this case, that would be the amount of water vapor we would produce. Now, it wants to know the final volume. The final volume is going to contain this material plus some of our excess oxygen. Well, how much excess oxygen would there be? Well, let's take this number and go back now to our oxygen and figure out how much of that do we need. Remember, this represents the amount of oxygen that I've been given, and I know that there's extra. If I have 100 cubic centimeters of water vapor produced, and the ratio is 2 to 1, that means I'm going to require 50 cubic centimeters of the oxygen. So that's what I need. I take the given, I subtract what I need, I also know then there's 50 cubic centimeters left over. So to look at my final volume of gas, I would have some extra oxygen in it, and I would also have that. Putting those two together means I would have 150 cubic centimeters of gas. So again, look for that particular line. All gases are at the same temperature and pressure and you can employ this shortcut. In the second problem, I'm going to look at uh, an experiment that many of you will have a chance to do, placing sodium in water. When you do that, you'll get a certainly amount of heat produced, but you'll also produce sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. My question is, what is the volume of this gas that you're going to obtain? Now we start over here with a 0. 7, 8 gram piece. We start with some water. Now 250 cubic centimeters of water would weigh 250 grams. So at first glance this might look like a bit like a limiting reagent question. So let's take this information right here and divide that by the molar mass of water. And that gives me 13.9 moles. which means if I'm considering hydrogen, ratio would be 2 to 1, so cut that in half. It's about 6.95 moles. If I consider the sodium as the limiting reagent, I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide that by the molar mass of sodium, 22.99 and I arrive at 0 0.31, oh, sorry, 
0 0.0313 moles. My ratio is also 2 to 1. So 0 0.0157. Well, this is my smaller amount, so this is my limiting reagent, this is my excess reagent. It is the limiting reagent that's going to then determine, okay, what volume of hydrogen am I going to obtain? To determine that volume of hydrogen, I'm going to turn to the ideal gas law, which says I'm going to have to take NRT and divide that by the pressure. Now. The number of moles we have right there are, from our IB data booklet, 8.31 temperature. Okay, there it is. I need to express that, however, in the Kelvin scale, so that would be 295 Kelvin. Um, we also have a temperature piece, sorry, the pressure piece. Now here I have my pressure in Pascals. It's all right to do that, but I do need to recognize that if I am going to use Pascals, then my volume, when I'm finished, is going to come out in cubic meters. So let's put the values in then for what we have here. So our number of moles, 0.0157, gas constant, 8.31. Temperature, 295. And finally, our pressure, 1.02 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Substituting and solving, you should get 0 0.000. Two significant digits in my mass, so that ultimately two significant digits in my answer. And as I mentioned earlier, that will be in cubic meters because my pressure was in pascals. So there's a look at two applications of our gas laws. In the next section, we'll take a look at solutions.